So things are a little stressful um, in the world. And so I wanted to kind of give a couple ideas of some stuff that I had to maybe help you lower your stress levels. Um, these aren't the only thing. I'll probably come out with more videos. And if you have something that comes to your mind, please post it in the comments below. Um, we're all trying to help each other through this. So um, first up, if you are experiencing um, any kind of um, sickness or anything like that, uh, symptoms or anything like that, here's the thing. Don't go and look it up online, okay? What's going to happen is you're just going to be sitting there looking up symptoms all day. You're going to worry yourself sick. It probably won't be the same thing anyways. Um, you know, if, if you need to go to the doctor, just go to the doctor. Well, I can't afford the doctor. Here's the thing, okay? If it's a serious emergency, you, you, you can't afford to not see the doctor. And I know that it's hard to pay for it, but find a way. I mean, it's... It's especially better than just sitting there worrying about it. You don't know how many people I, I, I meet and talk to and they say something like this. I'm experiencing rectal bleeding. It's probably just hemorrhoids. I mean, it could be hemorrhoids, but there's a lot of other things that cause bleeding and some of them aren't very pleasant. It's better to get a handle on it sooner than later. I, for instance, have colitis, which causes rectal bleeding. So had I not gotten, gotten that taken care of, See what I mean? I would be dying slowly. This I would be eaten on my insides. This is this is not something to just oh <laughs> it's fine. If you need if you are concerned with your medical health, then go to a doctor and make sure it's something to worry about. But either way, don't sit there looking up your symptoms. It's just gonna stress you out. Okay, so you might say, be saying okay, so I don't have symptoms. I don't spend all time looking up symptoms. That's fine. Good. Good for you. Um, looking at the news, you know, always being so paranoid about, is this going to be World War III? You know, what's going to happen with Ukraine? Uh, everybody's really invested in this, so I need to be invested in it too. Here's the thing, guys. Y you need to give yourself some, some time, okay? You can't go from COVID, everybody freak out, to World War III, everybody freak you, you can't You can't do that. I mean, your body's only able to handle so much before it starts having very negative effects. So try to not just sit there, and I'm not just saying, oh, be ignorant, be stupid. Here's the thing, okay? You don't have to know what's happening all the time. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to know every single detail. Hey, there's a war going on right now between Russia and Ukraine. Well, this commentator over here says that Russia is not going to be able to maintain this because of their economy. And then this guy over here says, hey, our economy is about to collapse. And it's like, okay, <laughs> do you honestly think that this is going to make you feel better or worse? If you're having a problem with stress, pro with, with stress following the news that closely isn't going to make it better. It's going to make it worse. And well, it, I'll feel better once I know. No, you'll feel better once you get your mind off it and think about something else. Um, another example, getting on Facebook, right? You start scrolling, and especially this is what we do. We get stressed out. So then we go on Facebook because we feel stressed out. But then we, as we're scrolling through Facebook, we see ads or somebody says something that just stresses out, us out all the more. <laughs> and we keep finding more and more, more stuff to get upset about. You gotta give your brain a break. Maybe the reason why you feel stressed is because you're stressed. You know, give it some time. It, you, you're you're going to be okay, all right? And even if you aren't sitting there worrying about it, it's not going to make it better. I can't think of a single issue where stress makes it better. I'm concerned I'm going to die. Well, if you stress out about it, that's not going to change anything. It'll probably make it worse. I'm concerned we're going to have World War III. Well, is stressing out about it going to help that not to happen? I'm concerned about... See what I mean? You can't go from thing to thing and keep stressing your body out like that. It, it just It's just not meant to do that. I think of Michael Bluth on Arrested Development. You can't do that, buddy. Um, so you got to give your brain a break. Um, maybe try to just have news for 15 minutes for one day a week. Maybe instead of looking up symptoms, just talk to your doctor one time and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. Well, I can't afford it. I understand that. I just said that. But look, you can't afford to keep putting your body under so much stress. And here's the thing. People always tell you stress is killing your body. And that's true. Stress does kill your body. But the more you're worried about stress, the more it's going to stress you out. So rather than thinking about it, think about something else. Okay? Give your brain something happy to think about. Um, some ideas that I have that I've used. Okay? Get up in the morning. Do some stretches. Breathing exercises with some soft music on. 
that really helps. I have a fountain that my wife made me in my office. I plug it in, just let the let, listen to the water. Listen to a comedian. Um, I try to every single day watch a video by a comedian, and you know, just something to make me laugh. And that's good. And then you know, I look up places of pictures of places that I want to go. You know, things that happy things. And it's not that you have to live with your head buried in the sand, but there's a difference between burying your head in the sand and constantly stressing yourself out, you know, um, doing exercises, going out for a walk, you know, enjoy the little things about life. Oh, man, I got, I got this book. I'm so excited to read it. You know, that kind of stuff. I mean, let, let your life be fun. Don't don't make it be like, oh, I have to worry about everything. Um, and here's another little thing that I found helps me lower my stress levels. Um, a rough day can still be a good day. Um, I have chronic issues. I have th sometimes it's chronic pain. Sometimes the colitis causes low energy levels, that kind of stuff. And I don't always feel like getting up and facing the day. <laughs> today was actually one of those days. I'm just having a really hard time today, emotionally, physically. I'm just I'm not into this day. I I, I can't wait till I can go to sleep and just be done with it. <laughs> I know that sounds bad and, and pessimistic, and I I get that. I'm not, I'm not trying to be pessimistic. Um, but you know, when you're having a rough day, it can still be a good day. You know, I, I can have a day that I'm having anxiety through the roof and it can, that's a rough day, but it can still be a good day. I can ha I can do things like read a book and that's a good thing. I can, I can spend time with my kids. I can look outside at the weather. I mean, it's a great rainy day. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. You don't have to, <sighs> you, <laughs> you don't have to let it, let it get to you so much. It can be a rough day and still be a good day. Um, and if you focus on, you know, look for the good things, it'll be a lot easier. Um, you got to teach yourself to be optimistic. And uh, I know people, especially pessimists, are going to say, well, I'm just a realist. I, I get that, but maybe maybe learn to still look on the lighter side of life. Um, that's just an idea. Um, so uh, next idea is listen to music. Music, excuse me just has an ability, it, it hits our brain in a different area than any, really any other thing in life. And so it's, there's some things that music can treat that other things can't. Um, I was actually reading a, reading a, a book by a, um, she had all kinds of different things after her name. She's some kind of therapist, okay? <laughs> and she's a doctor or something, I don't know, she's something. And uh, I think her name is Faith. Um, the name was, the book was called Unf Your Brain. And she was talking about the way that in third world countries, they actually have higher recovery rates in, you know, where they don't have like anti-psych meds um, than they do here in like the Western world. And that's because the meds weren't meant to be like a fix-all that you stand for forever. So what we do is we isolate ourselves and then take a bunch of meds and it's making it worse. And it's making it where we're not actually getting better. And, um, you know, uncivilized places have it where they're actually getting a lot better faster because they have community. We can't, we can't keep living like this and pretend like it's okay. You know, um, oh, well, you know, you can listen to music and do meds. And here's, here's the thing, like, they're not that great for you. It's just to help you get a handle on things. And I know that's scary to think of life without meds, but there can be life without meds. Um, another idea, um, work on it for a time, then take a break. If you've got something specific that's stressing you out, set a timer, start working on it. Then when the timer runs off, okay, get up and go do something else. Get your mind completely off of it. Play a video game, I don't care, just do something else. And you might say, okay, now, um, it's not really like that, it's more of a health issue. Okay, so if there's something that you need to think about with it, so think about it for 10 minutes or something like that, and then just move on. Um, another thing related to that is, let's say you're having anxiety. Um, so let yourself be afraid. Let yourself experience that for 10 minutes. To, I'm starting a timer. Go ahead and be afraid. And you're going to just, don't fight your anxiety. Just let it happen. And then when the timer's up, you're, okay, well, we're thinking about something else now. When you allow yourself to process an emotion rather than running from it, you're going to find you're, you're going to get a lot more in control of it. Um, especially when you have something like a panic attack. Just stop. And let it happen. Running is not going to make it any. There's there's three reactions. There's there's fight, flight, or freeze. Well, freezing would be doing nothing, so it, it's moved you to inactivity. 
Um, fight is, you know, no, I'm going to do this. And then flight is, ah, you know, okay, so everybody's clear on that. But when you're having something like a panic attack, just stop and let, 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 let yourself feel so that you can get back in control and say, okay, now what am I going to do about it? Um, a feeling is supposed to last, uh, the same book that I was, that I was reading, it's supposed to last, uh, an, emotion, an emotion will last 90 seconds. But what makes it last longer than that is she was writing about in the book about how we drag it out with how we think about things, how we deal with, deal with it, the, the trauma that we haven't dealt with from the past, that kind of stuff. But the emotion itself is only meant to be 90 seconds. So, I mean, that's, that's just crazy to me. And that tells you, and she actually made this point, that a lot of times people don't have a chemical imbalance in their, in their brain. They just, their brain's all screwed up and they just need to take the time and energy and effort to rewire your their brain and how they're thinking about stuff. So um, th and that was encouraging for me. Um, and a, a couple more ideas, read a book. Uh, if you don't like reading, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, take a bath, do something relaxing or fun. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do there. Some people get into stretches and that kind of stuff. Um, get exercise, go out for a bike ride, go out for a walk, that kind of stuff. Uh, eat healthier, don't sit around eating fried foods. That's not gonna make you feel better, okay? It's also going to make you feel more stressed, not less. Comfort food doesn't actually comfort you. It sounds good. Your brain tells you it's going to be good. You eat it and it's not good. Um, so uh, don't emotional stop, emotional shop. If you're feeling very stressed out, stay, stay off of Amazon, okay? Because you're going to have like your, your wish list and it's just going to magically make its way into your cart and then magically make its way into the order. And then you're, stre you're stressed out because you spent all that money that was not in your budget. You can set money aside and that's fine, and then spend the money that you actually already set aside, but don't spend money without it actually have been set aside already. It's gonna always wreck you, and, and things, financial things always stress people out more so. So if you are already in, stre in financial stress, try to get out of it, try to deal with it before you, you know, try and add on to it. Um, another, and some more ideas here. Keep your job in its place. Remember that your, your job is not your life. I mean, it, it's okay. If you get fired, it's okay. And I know sometimes we, what if I get fired? What if this happens? It's, it's okay. You're, you're going to find a way through it. You've made it this far. You've done great. You'll keep going. It'll be fine. Okay. Um, your job is, is just a job. Okay. At the end of the day, it's just a job. Um, another idea is if you're in school, take a break from school. If you are incapable of handling the stress at this time, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, if you need to go get help from a counselor, just have some coffee with a friend. I mean, that's totally fine. Um, these I was reading in a, in a book, maybe it was that same book, and she was talking about the way that it's it's harder to get help than it is to not get help. So it's not a sign of weakness when you go get help. It's a sign of strength that you're able to actually go out there and do that. A lot of people are too scared. They're too scared to get help. So if you're, if you're able to take that big step and say, look, I, I'm overstressed. I need help. That's totally fine. If you need to take a break from school, take a break from school. You know, it's it's not one of those things where it's really going to impact your life overly that much, missing out on like one semester of school. Like, for instance, I took off, I, I finally got into grad school. I've been waiting to get into grad school for forever. I finally get into grad school and I have to drop out because I'm at a bunch of doctor's appointments. I have um, colitis. I'm trying to adjust to the, med to the medicine and, and the different lifestyle. I'm trying to be in a, in a better place up here. You know, I started, I started therapy for the first time in my life. I always tell other people, go get counselors. But now I got my own counselor now and I, I don't know how to feel about it still because it's like, I, I always knew it was a good idea, but it's one of those things where it's, it's hard to do something you're not used to doing. It's hard to open up. It's hard to that. You know, just the whole process, it's, it's scary because it's new. You know, all, all these different things. But here's the thing. You're going to get through it. It's going to be fine. Okay. Um, if you have any other ideas about how to lower, lower your stress levels, please post them in the comments below. Um, I think that would be super helpful, not just for me, but for anybody else who stumbles upon this video. And I will try to make more videos in the future about how to lower your stress levels, especially since we're in such stressful times. Goodness.